What I'm going to do in these next couple of recordings is to divide all of metabolism into manageable chunks. And then at the end, what we'll do is work on how all of these pathways interact. Um, so we're going to start with the basics, which is you have these macronutrients coming in. You have amino acids, you have monosaccharides, and you have uh, fatty acids. How do you get energy out of them? What are the pathways? Okay, so let's start with carbs. Carbs are the basic. This is probably something that you saw in uh, your intro bio course, and it has all of the pieces that you're going to use for the other two pathways. So that's a good place to start. Whatever monosaccharide you have, chemical reactions take those other monosaccharides and convert them into glucose. Glucose is, is sort of the common currency for metabolism. So what glucose, if when it comes into the cell, it gets transformed into, through a series of chemical reactions, into a molecule that's called pyruvate. This process is called glycolysis. Glycolysis is an anaerobic process. It doesn't require oxygen. And the decision about whether to take the next step from pyruvate uh, depends on the oxygen supply in the cell. But we're not going to talk about the alternative, which is lactogenesis, um, in this course. Instead, we're just going to focus on the aerobic pathways. So once pyruvate is made, that is the end of glycolysis. The next group of steps here, from pyruvate to acetyl-CoA, through the electron transport chain, through the citric acid cycle, this is all called aerobic respiration. So um, pyruvate uh, has a bunch of different, there's a bunch of different things that you can do with it. But to make energy from pyruvate, the next step is it needs to be converted into acetyl-CoA. So all of these steps from here to here generate a little bit of ATP, generate some electrons, which go to NADH. Um, but the energy yield from this part is relatively small. But once acetyl-CoA gets made, provided there's adequate oxaloacetate, which is what it joins up to, acetyl-CoA will enter the citric acid cycle. The citric acid cycle makes ATP, and it also makes electrons, which get transferred to NADH and FADH2. Um, and the NADH and FADH2 goes to the electron transport chain dumps off the electrons, and then that's how you get ATP made from all of those reducing equivalents. So that's how you get energy from carbs. Okay, so let's look at what happens with fats. Okay, remember that fats um, are degraded into a fatty, um, fatty acids and glycerol. Um, during the process of digestion, but then they're, when they're stored, they're reassembled. And whenever um, lipids ne need to get transported someplace, um, they go in and out of, of this linkage with glycerol. It's a handy way to transport things. So one of the first things that the cell has to do is it has to take these fatty, these triglycerides, and break them down through a process that's called lipolysis into the free fatty acid and the glycerol. The fatty, free fatty acids is where you get most of the energy from fats. Each two carbons in the fatty acid is turned into acetyl-CoA through a process that's called beta oxidation. And then the acetyl-CoA provided there's enough oxaloacetate, will enter into the citric acid cycle and do exactly the same thing that the acetyl-CoA that came from the pyruvate did. Same thing. Acetyl-CoA, acetyl-CoA. The glycerol, um, there is one molecule of glycerol. 
uh, for every three molecules of fatty acids and triglycerides and each of these fatty acids may have like up to 18, 22 chains. So let's just say for you, if you had a triglyceride that had three chains that were 20 amino acids each, that would be 60 carbons in the fatty acids and each two carbon unit gets made into an acetyl-CoA. So you are going to get from those 60 carbons, you are going to get 20 acetyl-CoAs and from glycerol only one acetyl-CoA. So you don't get as much energy from it, but it's there. And what you're going to see is that glycerol is much more useful to the cell for other things other than energy generation um, under circumstances when carbohydrates are in short supply. Okay, so that's how you get energy from fats. Okay, amino acids is a little bit more complicated because they don't have one entry point they have multiple entry points depending on the uh, amino acid. So the first thing that has to happen to all of these amino acids is they have to get their amino groups stripped off through a, a reaction that's called deamination. And the deamination reaction generates lots of urea, which the body needs to get rid of. And the stress of dealing with all of that nitrogen puts an upper limit to how much protein we can have in our diet before we start to experience kidney problems. So, but we're going to leave that out of this slide. What I want to focus on is where these amino acids come in. So, like lipids, like the fatty acids, you can, some amino acids get made into acetyl-CoA. This group of amino acids, of which leucine is one example, are a special group of acids because they are called ketogenic amino acids. And they are the only amino acids that cannot be made into glucose in gluconeogenesis. Okay. All the other amino acids are called glucogenic amino acids because they can be made into glucose through gluconeogenesis. Um, but we're going to get to that in a minute. So ketogenic is made into acetyl-CoA. All of the rest are glucogenic. So some amino acids are made into pyruvate. Pyruvate then becomes acetyl-CoA, feeds into the citric acid cycle, etc. Uh, ketogenic amino acids are made into acetyl-CoA. Provided there's enough oxaloacetate, they get fed into the citric acid cycle. And likewise, each one of these little spots between arrows represents a chemical that we're just not showing you because it's overwhelming. And each one of these amino acids that come in here can be made into one of those. So if an amino acid comes in here, it's missing out on all the NADH and FADH2 and ATP that was generated in these steps, but you can still get reducing equivalence and ATP that would happen over here from this particular amino acid. So that's how you get energy from them. I also wanted to point out that there are some amino acids that can be made directly into oxaloacetate. You've heard me say a couple times, provided there's enough oxaloacetate around, making oxaloacetate to match acetyl-CoA is a, a major way that cells make decisions about which of the various pathways um, to pursue. So I just wanted to point that out to you. So that's how you get energy from amino acids.